too, no. good, too advanced for us. Yeah, nothing to do with my age. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? I'm doing very well. Just uh, seeing and admiring the beautiful sun, but you look at the, the steam coming from every building everywhere. That coal is coming down. Yeah. But just like some caller said, uh, you know, you can't complain. Uh, it's cold. Uh, this is the only cold we've gotten, really, uh, throughout the winter. That's right. Otherwise, it's been pretty mild. And... Uh, as you said, minus three on Saturday next week already, so it's going to revert itself to a messy, uh, of course, uh, snow-melting situation all over, but uh, spring is coming around the corner, not far away. That's right. But let me start off by saying happy Valentine's Day to everyone. Of course, all those loved ones out there have uh, opportunity to spoil their wives, and usually it's about wives uh, that get spoiled more than the, the men, but sometimes the women try to spoil them too. And uh, but it's 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 up to uh, us as men to make sure we do our part to treat our wives uh, as we should treat them every day on Valentine's Day. Uh, but it's good to, to for me personally, of course, is that's when I got engaged to my wife uh, on 529 Wellington Avenue, and uh, we actually went back every February 14th to uh, to uh, reminisce that evening. And uh, I still remember the time I was. Uh, moving towards telling her why I'm going to ask her to marry me. And uh, and then uh, we were talking there. She was just in awe, looking at my eyes. And, and uh, we, of course, pull out the, the, the magic of putting, I put the ring in a cake uh, in our dessert. And uh, so, but anyways, she was just waiting for me to explain why I'm going to do it, because I said I'd never get married. And then the waitress came and cut it all off. <laughs> Say what? The waitress came and cut it all off. She was, oh, <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> we laugh at that sometimes today. So, <laughs> yeah, it was bread. I put it in the bread pudding. So it was. Uh, it was <laughs> but anyways, it still turned out to be a memorable time. And, uh, and 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 I actually give her a rose for every time we engage. So now it's uh, going to be a, quite a bit of roses. I can't even remember how much. I think twelve roses. I think I give her a rose for every year. So thirteen next year, fourteen. Uh, oh. So I also give one to my granddaughter. The six years she's been there too. So in the sense of, uh, so it's part of the the process, and I just love it. And uh, but it's good to be spoiled. Uh, Nappy Vines, she'll spoil me, but we're gonna have. I want to order something to eat because you can't really go to restaurants now. And uh, no. so to spoil her, and uh, she said, "No, I want to cook." So 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 that's I guess that takes care of that. Uh, yeah. I won't debate that. Uh, they're gonna feed me by cooking instead of me ordering. <laughs> <laughs> If this was in a camp now, I'd love to cook out in the camp. Yeah. Or else to a barbecue. I'd love to barbecue, but uh, uh, it, it's, this might be a little too cold uh, to be at tomorrow. So, But anyways, uh, happy Valentine's to everyone, all the women out there and all the men. Take your chance to spoil them. Uh, as I said, uh, maybe I'm not a good cook, but you may want to try something. Maybe a, a nice breakfast with pancakes and uh, some bacon and some eggs maybe and juice and coffee. Whatever you want to do. There's so many small things you can do, and women always appreciate just a small suggestions at many times it doesn't have to be uh, you know a big fancy expensive thing that you can't sometimes afford based on covid or even the shop but just making sure you spoil her that day is going to make her so special and uh, but to always remember we should always spoil our woman all the time yeah so again uh, i want to start off by taking jason broly also from uh, and his wife uh, uh, they actually uh, maintain our bison herd uh, we have uh, 12 we keep it with 12 just for cultural purposes he's got a hundred and something and it's a business he runs He's Métis, both him and his wife, and uh, they actually have a, a, a meat business farm that they have in Buffalo. And uh, so he actually uh, uh, butchered two, two buffalo for us, and which we have now passed on to our elders across the province, different places by the regions have been passing on uh, buffalo meat, as the fish will be now dis- uh, moving out. In fact, I was quite, quite pleased to hear... Uh, Lee LaPlante giving a heads up on, on the southwest. Uh, there's a, in, in case Sam Murdoch's hearing, uh, the Sam is the one that got a hold of me and indicating that, that they'd like to partner with us and uh, give uh, the Métis also an opportunity, as they did with First Nations, to have uh, pickerel and whitefish uh, fillets that will be distributed for free to, to our seniors and our families. And uh, Leah reported at the cabinet meeting, we just, which I'll talk about shortly, that's a thousand of, uh, people have applied for fish in the southeast. Southwest, sorry, southwest region. That's in the Brandon mm-hmm. region. Mm-hmm. So a thousand people there, Ray. A that's thousand. Four hundred and uh, I think she said four hundred and eighty-three homes or four hundred thirty-eight homes. Wow. So we will be now creating a a, a, a disbursement process. It's going to be quite a challenge because it's big regions, 
and uh, we are going to deliver uh, their, the fish to their houses. And but we're of course combining white fish. White fish is actually a beautiful fish. I love white fish. You order that in the restaurant when you go. So they're, they're both, uh, of course, fillets, and uh, there's no bones in them. And as I said, Ray, uh, I hope you called in to get some of yours for your house. And and uh, but it, it'll be uh, it'll be something of a treat uh, for our families to have some fish. And in our discussions, I understand with Fresh Waters that uh, we have, I think, uh, close to forty thousand pounds. And uh, based on the work of Sam Murdoch and Chief Crate, and so we will then. Uh, they indicated if we need more, we'll have some dialogue with them. So after New Year, after L'Oreal Day, expect it to be spread out right across the province. Uh, fish will be distributed to hundreds and hundreds, and probably as over a thousand houses. So, wow. so I'm looking forward to that. And uh, you know, it goes with our with our system, Ray. Uh, as I told you on the show, uh, we have now based on the first phase and the second phase. We have distributed over 10,000 hampers. What? Over 10,000 hampers. And these hampers, like, are 150 to $400 a hamper. Holy. So, so this is some big, big coin and oh big distribution system. Uh, and I, I can't take the regions enough. And all the staff that work uh, uh, diligently to make a difference, uh, I give my sister a little bit of a heck. Uh, she's, of course, the vice president, well-loved in her region. And she's been, her, just driving late at night. She's still out on the road uh, and I tell her, you know, slow down, you know, you can get in an accident and trying to spread out the work and she just doesn't stop. So, but if you look at her and all the other regions, uh, they're calling like crazy, making sure the vehicles are moving, the drivers are out there delivering and that's uh, over 10,000 amperes, right? And you, you do the math, it's, uh, the cheapest is 150 and up. And so you're, you're talking some massive millions. Uh, but what I am proud to say is that we have made a difference. There is not a question in our mind. We talked about it in cabinet uh, that there is not a there's not a chance nobody can say that MMF and our pro- programs did not make that difference because we have no support from the province. Everybody knows that. As you know, Pallister has made sure the Métis will not get even uh, included in the vaccines, but we made a breakthrough on that, and I'll talk about that very shortly. Uh, but uh, as you know, we're we're pushing back and forth, uh, and I'm so proud of the First Nation chiefs and what they've been able to. Uh, push and, and, and uh, put in place for themselves. Uh, and this is, uh, again, supporting each other. First Nation and Métis is supposed, standing side by side. We're neighbors. And uh, it's a, maybe this is a chain of trend that's going to come in the future. And you didn't hear one of my cabinet members saying, why did the First Nation get it? We don't get it. That's not fair. That Not one word of that came around my cabinet. Everybody is uh, very pleased that the First Nations are getting their vaccines, the elders, the traditional helpers, the first the first, first. Uh, service uh, uh, respondents, and you look at all of those things of that nature, uh, and, and, it, and they had to fight for that, them too. So uh, Pallister's made it very, very hard for Métis, uh, and has personally made it a, a personal vendetta, if you ask me. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that he could have made a difference if he wanted to right away. Now, Edder Stephenson invited us to a meeting uh, uh, to the, we, we of course, uh, Danny Vandell, Minister uh, for Canada has been pushing hard from St. Boniface and uh, Amity himself, and he's been demanding and asking questions along with uh, Miller uh, about why Manitoba has ignored Amity uh, when there's supposed to be an Indigenous tragedy and uh, distinct based approach because the Amity have very high chronic illnesses and, and very severe chronic illnesses. So uh, by leaving us out, you're, you're putting us at the, in, in jeopardy of early debt and, of course, a very dangerous situation to place families and communities. So. We've been pushing hard. We finally got invited. We got a discussion uh, from from that platform. Uh, Frances reported the meeting she had actually attended during the cabinet meeting at, at lunchtime. And uh, there's uh, now uh, we finally pushed our way into that committee. Uh, we will be invited. Uh, they're trying to say we want to. They want us to put a doctor there. And I said, well, we, our cabinet said, what is a doctor going to do for us there? A the doctor doesn't do what we need them to do, because it's already been determined what the medicine does. You don't need a scientist there. You don't need a doctor. You need a community organizer, the people that know the people, that know the communities, know where the elders live, know how to get the system in place. That's what you need. You know, I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm not shooting down doctors. Doctors have played their role and will continue to play the role in, in giving out needles and, and giving some sound advice. But when it comes to distribution, you need to know who knows your community, who knows your, your people, where do they live, and how do you get your system in organized? How do you use all the tools that you have at your toolbox to make sure that that vaccine system is going to be out there and working and coming to the right people? So, so we're making it clear we will be appointing somebody. There's a meeting on Monday, and we'll keep our people posted from now on that we are at the first meeting ever since, since March. 
So we've been not never allowed to attend, Ray, but now we're going to be there to hear Good. how they plan these vaccines, how they roll them out, how they determine where they go and who gets what. So mm-hmm. we'll be able to brief our people and keep everybody posted on what's going on. And uh, it's about damn time. And, and But again, I can't say enough to our Anita and Fran, our COVID team. I uh, work so hard at all the staff. Uh, it makes such a difference and not only... We have uh, food being delivered. We have services. Our pharmacy is delivering province-wide. Uh, we, have, we have a mental health line. We have all kinds of supports that we're putting out. We have funding to our students, funding to our uh, businesses. So you just look over and over all these pieces now when you put them all together, Ray. They mean that we are beating COVID. We are beating and overcoming COVID. Mm-hmm. And, and we need to do it. All, although we don't have vaccines, yep. we're making it clear we're doing it as a team, as a family, as a unit. Our youth have proven over their champions and have protected their parents and their families. You don't see any of our people running around and jumping up and fighting these things or saying COVID is not real or don't wear a mask. Uh, Our youth are out there saying, wash your hands, wear a mask, protect your family, protect your grandparents. So that's that's a a difference in in our situation, not like what you see happening in Steinbeck, uh, where they're saying that this thing is not real. Now tell that to the families that lost loved ones. Yeah. So our cabinet meeting did happen, Ray, on Thursday and Friday. It was a very robust cabinet meeting. We talked about a very uh, varying issues. One of them it was up there, and it was a f- short session of the uh, meeting, but it was something very important. I know people were applying uh, to our health program, and that's going very well, Ray. Uh, our housing repairs are working right across the province as we speak. Uh, the numbers are quite high, very high in context of how many houses have already been repaired. I think there's about 179 houses have been repaired already. And uh, there's a uh, hundred or two hundred more to go, or something like that. But they're just going through the channels of process. But some people were denied based on um, one one particular section on the application, where it said if you had a value of more than three hundred thousand, you wouldn't el- be eligible. For example, if you had a truck, you had a house, you had uh, RSPs or savings. Uh, we said that's absolutely wrong. You can't put that process in place that way, because you can't punish somebody for saving money. Since they're 20 years old, they put 100 bucks away or 200 bucks away in RSPs. Uh, then now you punish them after. Plus, you can't get your RSPs. You can't take all of it. You get you lose 50 percent taxes. Wow. So then, if you buy a truck, all of a sudden your truck today vehicles are what 50, 60 thousand dollars. So mm-hmm. what are you going to tell them? Well, now you got 50 thousand dollar value, but he could may have a he could be carrying a debt of of a, a nearly 90 percent of it. So we eliminate the entire clause of people applied and got denied. If you're hearing listening to me on the phone, we've taken that clause out. And there's specifically only based on a maximum of income. Now that uh, your asset have nothing to do with it. So, so that's been. I know it'll make a lot of people happy, and uh, especially those that own houses or are looking for support. And all of a sudden, you you value a house today. You, you say, well, you can't be eligible to get help. Well, that's that's not what you should be doing. So, anyways, we fixed it, uh, and and uh, it was unanimously decided by cabinet. So that's fixed up, and and now we're actually contact some of those people that got denied to see if they still want to apply and that they'll be eligible if they meet the, the rest of the requirements. So, uh, but that, that was a, a, a very important one. One of the big ones, of course, on our agenda was the education sector side. Um, Ray, I reported on the show, there's over 1,000 students, I told you, uh, last time uh, on our five universities. In fact, right now we've found over 1,228 in the five universities. So wow. that's 1,228 for sure we know of that are applying for the $5,000 bursary scholarship, mm-hmm. and that will equate to over $6 million a year uh, in, in uh, disbursements we'll give our students, and I can't say how proud I am, and uh, it's a lot of a lot of the resources we're able to negotiate with Canada. Uh, it's a permanent, it's supposed to be a permanent program, let's just hope the Liber- uh, I'm, I shouldn't be saying this, but I, I will say it's true. Uh, I haven't heard nothing um, with O'Toole or, or NDP, uh, Zagmin, Zagmin I, can, I better not say his name, but I might mispronounce it. Um, with the NDP leader, and uh, yet to say that they will maintain these programs if they get in. So I haven't heard that confirmation yet. So but we do know the Liberals are committed to this, uh, and it's a permanent program. So we'll have money set aside for our students uh, forever that go to university. So right now it's 5000 per student, and as I said, it's over $6 million a year. But we're still moving on the long-term uh, programs and strategies we had. We still got that $24 million endowment fund at the five universities. And we're going to be inter- introducing a new endowment fund, Ray, that will be, uh, Minister Widow will be announcing uh, probably in your April, I'm sorry, at the March, mm-hmm. uh, which will come. 
we're actually having an assembly. It's a different form of assembly. Uh, we're having an assembly on March 27, 28. So all the locals listening right now, the executives will be invited to that meeting. Uh, there'll be no resolutions or uh, constitutional amendments allowed uh, because our assembly usually has about 3,000 people there. And, of course, that can't happen. You can't, how can they properly uh, participate or have their voices heard? Uh, if we have it through a Zoom system, it just wouldn't work well. So we're just going to have an update, uh, give the audit statements, the uh, financials. Of course, we put that on our website anyway. But we're going to make sure that the, the, uh, uh, there'll be probably about 400 uh, representatives across the province from all the locals. Really? And so it's, that's still nice. That's probably yeah, still a 400. bigger crowd than most of the other meeting organizations that, uh, that meet across the homeland because uh, they uh, usually have about 400 people. And, and that is, is just our locals. That's we have about 3,000. So we, our goal is to still have an assembly in October. Uh, this assembly will be by Zoom, uh, as I said, to mostly deal with uh, updates and, and, and information sharing and, uh, and getting information into the communities as we try with Métis Hours, we try with grassroots newspapers, we try with the websites and all the rest of the ways. We just want to make sure as much information is being shared to our, our community so they know what their government's doing and how the government's moving ahead on developments and investments. They'll be quite pleased to hear of our, our amount of captured uh, capital investments we've made. Uh, they're quite large and, and, and over 100 in capital investments now we have across the province. Uh, and, quite, and that's really large. We're talking millions and millions of investments. And, uh, but it's, uh, the future looks very bright, Ray. It tells myself, and it's always been my dream, to develop something solid uh, that will maintain uh, a very solid position of the government. No matter what government could come in the future, they can never cut our government services. Mm -hmm. uh, that we will be solid enough, strong enough to make sure that we can carry ourselves through the tough of, toughest of times or the worst political uh, process of time. So that reminds me, L'Oreal Day, of course, is coming on Monday. Yep. And we talked about that. Uh, there's a lot of stuff happening in Dauphin. So Northwest, go into our website. They have fireworks. They have all kind of pre-recorded uh, videos that have taken place uh, regarding celebrations. They're, it's all going to be by virtual. Uh, we have a virtual partnership with St. Boniface Museum and the Lurial Institute, that'll be uh, taking place. Uh, but you look around, there are fireworks and going to be placed in one Pagosas in Dauphin. I think one at 6.30 in Dauphin and 8 o'clock in one Pagosas. Uh, so stay in your cars, obviously, and you can get to see them or look in the virtual. You'll be able to see the fireworks uh, shooting off into the sky. And just remember our great leader, Lurial, the founder of Manitoba, the first premier of Manitoba, and the father of Confederation. So we look at it from that concept, but we're very proud. And uh, it's not only for us to enjoy, it's for all Manitobans to enjoy. Because Lou Riel represented this province as, uh, for, and represented as the premier of all Manitobas, not just the Métis, but he, of course, a strong Métis leader on our behalf. So, so clearly something that we feel very uh, proud of. On Lou Riel Day, I'll be driving out. I'm going to, of course, the viewing of our provincial elder, George Fleury. Uh, that'll be taking place in Mendoza. Uh, he is uh, there'll be Sunday viewing at three to five, and a viewing on three to five on Monday, and the funeral will take place on Tuesday, which will be a private ceremony, obviously based on COVID. Our rights the church will be packed beyond and and, and right outside the doors. Uh, so our cabinet uh, will be going on Sunday. Some of them on Monday, I'll be going. Uh, it's three to five. I think ten people at a time are allowed in uh, for the viewing, and so I'll be there with my wife and Don and a few other ministers. Jack Park is coming and. Uh, so we'll be out there uh, making very clear uh, to show our, our respect to our provincial elder who has passed away and uh, who's left his world to go back to be with his wife now and, and spend the rest of his uh, remaining time in heaven with his family. And uh, I look forward to, to being there to say my personal uh, goodbye, which I already did uh, my prayers at night to him. So, mm -hmm. But again, I, I'm proud to be there to support the family. I'm also, I also had a good meeting with Ed Cantor, and uh, everybody might doesn't know uh, Cantor's, it's called. It's a store on, located on Logan Avenue, and uh, it's been around. His dad had, and his uncle ran it forever, and I think it was three of them off the start. And, uh, of course, Boda passed on now, so Ed took over. And uh, the Cantor is a, is a much bigger store, but it, it, it fought the milk uh, producing prices at one time. because the milk marketing board had a certain price you can sell milk at, and they wanted to sell the price cheaper to their customers because they know they have uh, working poor uh, the, the poor and the middle, lower middle class and, and also some middle class that live around that area and, and people from all parts of the city shop there because they try to keep their prices so competitive for a little store 
competing against these big giant stores, and they've been so successful in that model. And so we do a lot of our business with Ed Cantor's uh, on, on a lot of our hampers being delivered all across Winnipeg. And so he wanted to give back. Uh, he wanted to give back the Federation $10,000 to do as we want. And so I decided to sit down and meet with Ed, and we had a good discussion at the office. And I said to him, you know, Ed, well, what, why don't we match you? MMF will match you $10,000. Let's make an endowment fund. Uh, we'll put it away for five years. We'll give 1000 uh, per student. We'll give two students... Uh, uh, out uh, uh, bursaries, a thousand each, and uh, and we'll see where it takes us from there. And he was very excited about it. He liked it. He said he wants to make sure that nobody looks at it as he's forgetting out of anybody else. Uh, he said, no, I'll work with anybody. And uh, and I believe in giving back. He said, I want to do my part in the community. And if anybody else approaches him, he's more than willing to sit down and create an idea where it could be matching funds. Uh, so I really want to commend him for his business uh, mind and, uh, and coming down and saying, I want to, I want to help. And so, so that twenty thousand dollar endowment fund will be announced by me and Head uh, shortly. Um, and uh, what is going to be named, I'll wait for his his advice and uh, mm -hmm. and the focus on where it's going to be probably in the business sector side. And so, but it'll be a thousand dollars additional that two students can get one thousand each. So uh, that's that's good to see that Ray, when you see it the sure business, private business coming out like that. That's for sure. I drove all the way there to get my stakes. I actually still drive all the way there to get my stakes. So, or or hamburger, they have good deals on hamburger and all kind of meat products. I just love going all the way. It's quite a ways from where I live, but I still go there to support them. So, mm -hmm. again, Luriel Day, you'll hear it all over the radio stations. You'll see it on our website. Uh, I did some videos and, and also some interviews uh, by radio, and so you'll hopefully get to hear all that. Now, there was so much that happened in the cabinet, and I can't go through all of it, but I, I will definitely uh, want to say certain things to happy birthdays that are all over this list in front of me. Um, I want to start off by saying happy birthday, Gary Lepinard. You play his tune. Yep. Uh, actually, Gary wrote a tune for me. There's, uh, I think he calls it Shark Drives Real. Oh. Uh, so I hope one day that uh, you'll get your hands on it, Ray. I'll take a look. Yeah, yeah Gary Lapine. I want to thank him for that. Uh, uh, his birthday is Monday, February 8th. Uh, Jeremy Mayer is 43 years old. That's Judy Mayer's baby. It's Thursday, February 11th. J Jackson Mayer is 20 year old. That's Judy Mayer's grandson. Sunday, February 14th, the Valentine's baby. Elmer Nault, now one of the fiddlers and musicians, and sometimes we can't forget these guys, and we seem to uh, forget that we they're you know they lay quietly at home because uh, COVID and their age, and yet Elmer is, loves to entertain, still entertains as much as he can, and I have to make sure that when we have events that we invite people like Elmer Nault to to participate uh, uh, in in showing his his love and passion for making music. So mm -hmm. he's he's going to be 81. That was of course uh, Marilyn Nault's husband. She passed away. She was on our cabinet. Uh, his birthday is February 15th. Minister John Peronto, his birthday is February 14th. And that's, of course, Minister of Fisheries. Uh, we, uh, as I said on the show, we've ordered, uh, I think, 2,000 2, nets uh, that will be coming in. We're already giving some out that we received. Uh, also, Linda St. Cyr, uh, 70 years old. Linda, she's our elder and, and, and praised nationally for us and provincially. So happy 70-year-old uh, uh, Linda St. Cyr. And El Benoit, in fact, they sent my present by mistake ahead of time. So she sent a picture and said, oh, I got the present early. Yeah. <laughs> so it was supposed to be Friday, February 9th, but they sent it out uh, ahead of time. El Benoit is 60 years old. El has been a chief of staff for me for a long time. He's going to be 60 years old at uh, Brown Envelope time pretty soon, mm -hmm. and that's uh, February 19th. Now, the next gospel tune, Ray, if you can please send it out to, again, uh, the Flory family, a provincial elder. Uh, but I also want to say to Barb Lavely and her family and the loss of their uncle, Eddie, in Selkirk. And uh, I think we also have to Nancy uh, uh, Kolik here. Uh, she's from MMF Flower Bead Circle, and that's a big group there, ready to get together and bead, and I'm so proud of them. Her husband, Pete uh, Furlut, uh, began uh, his new journey on February 9th to his new home. So, again, happy... Uh, Greetings to those families uh, on their birthdays, but also at the same time, gospel tune will go out to those loved ones that have journeyed on to their new home. So, again, Ray, I can go on and on on all the different reports, uh, but I'll let the show go on with their, some of their ongoing business they have to do yet for so many people waiting to get on the line. Yep. I'm probably saying, Shark, trying to get off that line. I want to <laughs> speak this Valentine's Day. So, again, let me, uh, again, close off with those comments on Valentine's Day. It's always important, and we recognize that. And uh, it's just uh, uh, these important events. Easter is coming around the corner, uh, and, and I'm hoping that uh, eventually we will begin to start, 
you know, there's opportunity we're venturing out. Be careful, everybody, please. Take that precaution. If you have to go out, go out. Don't take in as a as it's time. Wow, that those stores open. Let's just go, you know. Uh, yeah, especially our young people who have done so well and made us so proud. Let's make sure we're very careful. Get what you need and get straight back home. That's and, sure. and stay isolated. Let's get past this. And, and I can't wait till October 8 when we have a, a big assembly. And I can't wait to hug. And I was telling that the cabinet hug and kiss and, and shake hands and, and laugh and, and, and just talk uh, to the people directly. I just can't wait for that. I miss it. Yeah. And uh, it's just uh, such a, a powerful thing when you have uh, missing all of that opportunity. And uh, I'm sure November 16, Ray, you'll be there this time, full-fledged. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll be at the Ca- Real Grave site. And, uh, you know, these, these are things I'm looking forward to are ahead of time already, and I, I just can't wait for this to all uh, go away. But we need to work together. Uh, let's just stand together, be together, support each other. We have our neighbors of First Nations. Let's work together hand in hand, and let's beat this damn thing. Yeah. So with that being said, Ray, you guys keep up the good work. Be safe out there. And uh, I'll, I'll uh, again say happy Valentine's Day to my wife out there and to all the staff at the Federation, happy Valentine's Day, and especially to all my citizens across the province. Happy Valentine's Day from the President and Cabinet. So take care, everybody, and have a good day. All right, David, thank you very much for the report. Thank you, Ray. And happy Valentine's Day and happy Louis Riel Day. Okay, right on. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye-bye. All right, that's, of course, David Charter, the President of the Manitoba Métis Federation, with this weekly report, Métis Matters.